once open scale made by Apex in collaboration with MiHoYo. So how is it? This is one of the best figures I've received this year. Hands down, without a doubt. Absolutely brilliant. Coming in at a whopping 27,000 yen, at least for my pricing. She has gone up slightly in retail stores, at least specifically where I bought her off. So instead of 27,000 yen, it's about 29,000 yen. Right now at the current exchange rate to USD, 185-ish USD or so. At least that's what I paid for. I think right now you could probably get her for like maybe 195, maybe 200 USD, which is still pretty good. I bought figures around the same pricing or even more expensive than this one. And the amount of stuff that you get with this one and just the overall presentation is not really as good. For example, Prince Eugen from Alter from Azure Lane. That one costed me about 40,000 yen. And while I do think it's one of Alter's best figures to date, and I think it looks really nice, when it comes to this figure, I think this one just looks aesthetically more pleasing. All right, so let's first talk about the box. Now, this is the box that the figure comes in. It's huge. In my eight years of figure collecting, this is the first time I've ever seen a box for a figure come out like this. Like MiHoYo and Apex definitely put in a lot of effort to make you feel like you're getting a premium product and it really shows. It's like a wooden crate almost. It's not entirely made out of wood. The texture on it is also very smooth, but it has a little bit of grit. It feels very nice, absolutely over the top box. So on the front side of the box, you do have the symbol of the Phoenix. On both sides of the box, you do have these windows that are elegantly cut out into like squares and rectangles, makes it look very modern, almost something like you would see in game. But on the top of the box, you have the geo symbol in the middle. You have some Chinese text, which I'm going to assume says Ningguan Pearly Jade version, one seven scale. And you also have this lovely flowing river painted on with some added leaves. It looks great. And on the bottom of the wooden crate box, you do have an image of the figure, very similar to what you'd see on our regular figure box with all the information and stuff. It opens up from the middle, from the sides, which is super cool. And inside of that, you will have the actual cardboard box that holds the figure inside. Completely brown, no logos, no pictures, no nothing. Compared to other cardboard boxes I've handled, this one feels very soft, very similar to paper almost. So yeah, the box is pretty cool, which also reminds me the shipping cost is going to be kind of expensive for this particular figure. Now, depending on where you live, shipping can vary and also where you buy from. So from the store that I bought this figure, these are the shipping prices for the three options. So you had EMS at 17,000 yen, DHL at 14,000 yen, and Surface, which is probably the cheapest one at 11,000 yen. So you're going to be looking to spending at least $80 plus for shipping this figure. Since I live in Canada, the only shipping option for me is DHL, so I ended up paying 14,000 yen, which is about 95 USD right now. Inside the box, you will have three layers of blister packaging. So you have the figure itself with a couple of accessories, another blister packaging with just accessories, and then you have the final blister packaging with just the base. So in terms of the accessories or props, she does come with a lot of them. So you have a paper screen, you have a lantern, which lights up. We'll get into that in a little bit, which is pretty cool. You have a tall wooden stool with a vase on it an incense burner, some jade scrolls, the jade pot, the base itself, which is very nice. I really like this. It's like a jade platform. It's got some leaves stuck to it. And then of course you got Ningguan herself, which she is attached to the chair. I don't know how many people would have liked her to be separate from the chair, but I do like how she's glued onto it because there's no chance of her falling off of the chair. <laughs> it gives weight to the whole piece. In terms of assembly, very easy to put together. Nothing should really give you too much of our time. Just follow the instructions. The instructions can be a little bit misleading on one particular part, and that's with the incense burner pot. They give you a diagram picture of where you should put it. The hole that they show in the photo isn't actually the hole that you're supposed to put the smoke in. You have to put it in the back hole. You'll know which hole it is because the incense burner pot only goes into the base one way specifically, which is nice because everything has a specific spot. You can put it there. You don't have to fiddle around guessing of where things are. So I can actually pick up the figure like this and nothing's gonna wobble or fall over. The only two items that don't have grooves for them would be the open scroll and the jade pot. But the jade scroll lies flat, so it's not really gonna fall over, right? And the jade pot with the scrolls in it, it's very heavy already, so it's not really gonna tip and fall. And I love that because recently I actually picked up Alter Sirius from Azure Lane. Fantastic figure. I love the base too, but there's no grooves for any of the items that go onto the base. So when you're picking up the base itself, the paper screen will probably fall off and maybe a manju here or two if you're not really careful enough. Another thing to mention about the smoke, because there's a little metal rod that it comes attached to the smoke when you put it inside the incense burner, it is fairly long. and the the hole that it has to go into is fairly tight. It's a very snug fit. So I wasn't actually able to push mine in all the way. So a little bit of the metal rod is sticking out, which honestly I'm fine with. But if you're a little bit OCD about that, and if you can't push it in all the way, I'd recommend getting some pliers or something and maybe cutting the rod just a little bit short so you can actually hide it. Also, like I said before, it is a very tight, snug fit. So when you push it in all the way, you might not be able to get it out without breaking something. So that's just another thing you might want to take note of. And then after assembly, 
that's what the figure looks like. Now let's get back to the lantern. The lantern slash lamp sheet comes with does light up. So there's a battery slot on the bottom. You can just pry off and you can insert a battery on there. I actually got an email from Amiami, the store that I bought this from. There was a change in batteries. I don't know when the change happened. I do know that China ended up getting their orders for their figures about a month or two earlier than us. So I don't know if China's batch for figures actually had the previous battery. Uh, but the one we're getting is like the C1332 or something like that. I'll post it here, obviously. I bought both batteries off Amazon, so I ended up wasting Sing like five bucks on one of them, but that's fine. So slot the battery in and you can place it on the base. Now to turn on the light, I love how they added this. One of the scrolls has a magnet. You'll know which one it is because it's the biggest one and it weighs the most out of the rest of them. You grab this and you just put it close to the bottom of the lamp and it just turns on. That is so sick. They incorporated a magnet and you also get a lamp that lights up. Now, usually when it comes to figures, when you have something that lights up, it's usually kind of a really ugly gimmick. Like I have one for Saber and it does not look very good, but this one looks fine, which just increases the value for this figure for me. Cause like you get something so cool in this price range, it's dope. Now the figure itself, fantastic. I don't have any deficiencies or marks on mine. It lo everything looks pristine. Sculpt is fantastic. I love her hair, the sculpt on her legs. There's a good amount of detail on all of the props, including her outfit. Paint job is clean, especially the red mark on her leg, perfectly painted. Now, the one thing I could probably nitpick about for this particular figure is the face. Compared to the prototype version, if you can see here closely, the eyes are a little bit more wider and spread apart on the retail version, which is a bummer to me a little bit because I did prefer the face on the prototype version, but it's not too far apart to where it's a turn off. In terms of size though, she is pretty big. So you're gonna have to find a pretty respectable place to display her in. She does fit perfectly into one slot of a detolf. You might even be able to fit one or two dendroids in there with her, but she's definitely someone that deserves her own space. Uh, which brings me to another point, the box itself can actually be used as somewhat of a display case if you really wanted. I wouldn't really recommend going this route, but the figure does fit perfectly into the box. And since the box has these really elegant windows, you can actually just display her in there. Of course, I would recommend if you have like another smaller light that you can just plop in there, it might look really nice, but you can do that. You can also see the hinges very easily like this. So uh, probably not the ideal way to display her, which is probably why MiHoYo actually makes their own custom display case for this particular figure. I don't actually know if it's still up for order or where you can order it because I actually heard this information secondhand. I'll try to find a picture or something, but Google it yourself because I have no idea. But overall, I think this is a very good figure for the price point. Very jam packed with a bunch of props. It has its own little set and Ningguan looks great. And one of the best this year, if not the best this year. Apex has really shown off that Chinese manufacturers mean business. I've been very pleased with all of Apex's figures. I've collected all of their Arknights ones and they look great. Mythos is another company I've heard very good things about. I actually only own one Mythos figure and that is the one that they did in collaboration with Tokyo Talk Mode of Holo from Spice and Wolf. Fantastic figure. I will be getting my second Mythos figure which is Surtur from Arknights later this month I think. So that's going to be pretty cool. And then there's Good Smile Arch Shanghai which is the Chinese division I guess of Good Smile. But they've done a fantastic job on their Arknights stuff. Absolutely killer value for those figures my god. They're really showing off some really good stuff for incredible value because Japanese manufacturers I'm not going to lie. They've been pricing their stuff very bad for especially for what they're putting out. Uh, here's an example, Chainsaw Man. You guys probably know the series. It's anime is airing this season and it's very popular. Recently, I saw a Chainsaw Man figure of Makima go up for pre-order and uh, here's the picture. Can you guess how much this figure costs? Well, if you guess like sub $80 because of how simple it is, well, you'd be wrong. That figure right there costs 29,000 yen, pretty much the same price as Ningguan right now. It's ridiculous. How can you even compare these two figures and think they're the same Bruh. price? I initially thought this figure was a prize figure until I saw it was actually a 1 7 scale. The brand is by MAPPA apparently, and I was like, what? MAPPA makes anime figures when they're already overworking their staff for their anime? I guess that's why it turned out so ugly. But nah, it's actually not being made by MAPPA. It's actually being distributed by MAPPA, but actually made by Furyu apparently. Goddamn Furyu. I, I don't know what you're thinking, but this thing absolutely looks like a prize figure. And for the price, oh my God. God, definitely not worth just the overall look of the figure is very low quality like I think my patrons in the discord were actually talking about this figure and uh, they said that most of the funds were probably put for the butt because that's the only thing that looks sculpted well uh, so yeah that's pretty much it definitely pick this up if you're a Ningguan fan or you're a Genshin Impact fan and you want to start collecting figures this is definitely one to pick up first if you can she's still in stock at a couple of places I'll leave links down below to where you can potentially purchase her still but she might go out of stock by the time you watch this video so jump on that fast. With regards to other Genshin Impact figures you'll be seeing on the channel, if you want to get subscribed, we will be doing a video on Mona coming out later this month. 
I think she's actually already been released in China, if I'm not mistaken, and then also Kaching later in December, who is also released already in China. Since I ordered mine from Japanese retailers, I'm not gonna be getting mine until when they come out in Japan. And then we also have Ganyu, who I'm pretty excited for. That's coming out in January. Those are the ones that I've particularly pre ordered right now. There is a figure of Zhao coming out and also a Traveler, by Aether and Lumina. If you haven't hopped up on those pre-orders yet and you want to, recommended to do so. I'm personally waiting for a Zhongli figure or one of Beto, Yula, Yelan. I'm waiting, mihoyo. Now, if you excuse me, I gotta film the next figure haul video because I have a bunch of boxes behind me, so. Catch you guys later. Peace.